Before starting the cloud computing, one should know about virtualization. So what is virtualization? Virtualization is something where you virtualize the hardware. Okay, and virtualize the machine where the operating system is running. So just to show you an example. So what I'm going to do is I have my Windows desktop running here and this is Windows 10 operating system. So I can run multiple virtual machines on this desktop. So just to show you how I can do it quickly, I can install a software called VirtualBox where I can create multiple virtual machines and I can install different operating system like Linux on a Windows machine. So that will give us some basic understanding about virtualization. After creating a Linux operating system on VirtualBox and we'll access as if we are accessing that virtual machine remotely and the same principle in fact we can apply to access the virtual machines created on the cloud. So to show that, first we have to do is, you go to browser and go to virtualbox.org. So here, or you can maybe, uh, you can uh, search virtualbox. So here you can see Oracle Virtual Box and go to download. You can see here Virtual Box 6.1 um, and a Windows host. So download the Windows software for Virtual Box. So click Windows host and this will take you to the exe.exe file and it will be downloaded. So download it. Once it is downloaded, you try to run that installer to install VirtualBox on your desktop or laptop. So I'm going to click here and just click yes. This is going to install VirtualBox and it will open up. Okay, welcome to Oracle VM Virtual Box setup 6.1.34 setup, right? So go to next and just click next and next. Yes, install. So start the Oracle VM, VirtualBox 6.1. You see, because <coughs> you have the old version of the Oracle VirtualBox extension. So next what you do is, see these are the previously I installed the software. So you, what you, for you, it may appear that nothing is here because I already installed. So there is something here, but when you freshly install, it will be completely blank, okay? So next you do is, what do you do? There is something called extension pack and it is one type. From all platform, it is only one download. So download the extension pack and just, you see here, you can see where it is downloaded, right? And it will be actually on the download folder so here it is go to downloads and extend pack and just double click here 
and this will go to because previously it was I have already installed so it is asking upgrade but when you install it uh, uh, okay let me remove it first so that we preference what I'll do is uh, extension I will first uh, remove it because it's already okay so that it becomes easier for you to follow so just double click and it will so install and pull it down for the license I agree and it's accepts max install successfully right so we have what we have done is we have installed VirtualBox and then we have installed the extension pack now we can create multiple virtual machines on this okay so what do you do <coughs> you see here because I'm okay so I'll, I'll make it a little smaller for the recording purpose So that it becomes easier right in fact okay let's close everything okay I think I have multiple opened so this is installed here now double click on this and it appears here right so this is what is virtual box and now let's create a virtual machine or simple called the VM on this virtual box okay so go to for you it may be completely blank at this point okay so go to this you can you can see here there are a lot of uh, first thing first let's go to preference so here I have to tell you that if you in your system if in your laptop or desktop if you have multiple disks okay like I have if you see here my PC has got multiple disks it may happen that in your laptop you have only one simple disk so if it is C drive, what do you go is just let the preference and here general default machine folder as it is. It may be C drive, C user and program files or C virtual box or uh, it will be C drive. But if you have multiple drives like I have like C, D, E, F and so on and so forth. If you have that, I'll suggest that you use your drive other than C because you don't want to fill up your C drive with virtual machines. So you can change that from here. Preference and what you do is you create in your D drive, you go here and like I have created called VirtualBox VMs, create a folder with a right click new folder and maybe virtual box VMs right you create a virtual box VMs and this is in D drive right so you can change that here same thing like I, I have no space so this is virtual box VMs D drive virtual box D column backslash virtual box VMs the folder right which we just created okay so now whenever you create a new VM so that will be stored in this folder now you see there is nothing right so just
So let me clean it. These are the, some of the servers I created previously. So it is there. I'll clean it so that it becomes very fast for you. Remove. So it is now very clean, right? It's a clean virtual box installation. Now, here <coughs> you you can first you can learn this tool. You don't worry about all these things. Preference, we we just saw that what it is. Either you can open it here, preference, or you can go to file and preference. Either way, you can import existing VMs. You can export your VMs. You can create a new VM. So here, what we can do is create a new VM. Or else create. VM is virtual machine, so I'll go. I'll give it here. My first Linux. I'll, I'll okay, Linux, simple Linux. VM, or we can call it Linux base image. So normally we're creating images I'll, I'll tell you later what is image but let's call it linux base image and you see here by default it came d colon self virtual box vms what we did in the preference that we set it that all the folders created all the virtual machines which will be created is stored inside this folder and type is linux and you can choose which Linux you want to create. So there are multiple flavors of Linux available. Let's go to Ubuntu 64-bit. Okay, Linux base image and Linux Ubuntu. Next. So what? How much memory you want to give to this new virtual machine? I have a lot of memory. Uh, in fact, I have uh, 32 gig. If you see here. Uh, you can check how much memory you have got in your system. So you can go to your PC and right click and see the properties, right? It will give you the information how much you have. You see here, I have a AM, uh, AMD processor with eight core and 32 gig of RAM. You may, you may not have 32 gig, you may have eight gig of RAM. You, if you are using Intel laptops, you can you may be i5, which is four core, four core and eight gig. So if you have four core and eight gig of RAM, you can what you can do is <coughs> you can um, what you can do is you can as, uh, assign only maybe two gig to your VM. Okay, so here two gig is two zero four eight. Okay, two zero four eight. If you want to give more, sometimes you can give four zero nine six. This is four gig of RAM. So I get four gig of RAM, then create new virtual hard disk. Okay. For the new virtual machine, you are creating a new hard disk. And that hard disk space will be taken obviously from your underlying disk. So create. And it is a virtual box disk image. Next. Dynamically allocated. Select. I'll tell you what is fixed size and dynamically. Fixed size, if you click, it will from beginning itself, it will allocate the complete size of the disk which is may not be good for you because you may have limited storage. So you, the dynamically allocated is nothing but how much you use that much storage disk will be allocated. So don't worry about uh, much uh, about this two options. Just select dynamically. And you see here the complete part of the disk. It is called 
Linux base image dot VDI. Alright, so it is called VDI is virtual disk image VDI. So it is the file you see here VirtualBox VMs Linux base image that is the name of the for, uh, virtual machine and in that there is a file called linux base image dot vdi so that's what and it is showing by default 10 8 uh, 10 gig but we'll make it maybe 64 gig <coughs> 64 gig so i have a two two terabyte of uh, disk space but you can have 64 gig and it is showing just create right you see here this is linux base image is created it, it this is the summary of the virtual machine which is so what it means is we have created a virtual hardware on your physical hardware where we can install a linux operating system and that is your ubuntu linux ubuntu 64-bit linux operating system that's what we are targeting now we can, if you want to change the settings, you can go here, you can assign, go to system and look here, it is 4096 MB, that is the 4 gig RAM. If you want to assign more number of processors, see I have a 8 core CPU, right? So it is showing maximum is 8, 8 CPUs. So if you are using i5, you have a 4 core, but in Intel normally, it is two thread each core so it will even if you can see that you can have if you are using i5 you you may have uh, eight cpu you uh, also if you are using i7 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 nowadays they have four core they have uh, six core also so if you are having i7 uh, four core cpu you also will see that one to eight if you are using six core i7 you you may see that it is 12 so i am assigning two here two cpus out of eight i'll assign two okay and click ok so you can see here now the best memory is 4096 and processor is two that's what i'm assigning the linux operating system now it's the time to install the operating system so for that what you do is you go to ubuntu.com to your browser ubuntu.com and you can download simple um, ubuntu you here you go to download let's download the server because ultimately when uh, you are on cloud you possibly will create server so let's directly jump into that we are not interested in creating another desktop so we'll go and download the ubuntu server <coughs> and here manual server installation click and once you click that it will download a file with extension dot iso so we need that file that is actually we call the virtual disk which is previously if you remember we used to install the operating system using a disk right so now uh, we are going to we are not going to use 22 we are going to use the lts version so this is ubuntu server 22 so i am going to go you 20 ubuntu server 20 so or you can if you want to use the latest you can use uh, anyway it is lts so let's do the 22 at least you can use the 21 also so if you click this is download and for the better of uh, organization what you can do is always in your d drive create a folder called iso i have actually that in the um, e drive if you see here i have a folder called iso where i save all my iso images right in the linux if you see here i have a 1 to 20 downloaded right now Ubuntu 22 let me save it here also so it is showing little uh, how many minutes 12 minutes left 1.4 gig it's actually it looks like um, 
actually my server I mind I'm, I'm accessing with this is remotely and this is another room it is away from uh, <laughs> from my router so it is slow so we will not wait for that to download let it download well, I have if you saw that I have already existing 20 1 to 20 ISO dot ISO so let's install that it is the same process by the way so now go to settings well let's go to uh, here I, I went back to virtual box settings go to storage and you see here this is a circle like symbol like a disk so this is the virtual disk right and click that and again click on the disk symbol here the circular symbol and choose a disk file click here and select the one which you want to install Ubuntu 20 though we are downloading Ubuntu 20 it is still okay it is it filed so uh, forget that so that's the way you can download because I have it uh, Ubuntu 20 let's not wait for the 22 to be downloaded okay and okay another thing is storage and you see here uh, it is already attached right so that's okay so in the storage I would like to show you another thing you see here now two disks this is the disk actually where 64 gig which we created previously this is the virtual disk which will be used for the operating system to hold the files operating system files and this is the software which we are going to install so now click start when you start it this is going to run the virtual machine give it sometimes and you can checking the integrity of the disk you can let it go you can pull it a little bit to have the bigger yep full so one to twenty it is downloading uh, it's in it is coming up with the options for the operating system if you have never installed operating system or Linux operating system so this is the way and it is for Ubuntu so you can you see here you can click and <coughs> before doing that let's remember one thing because without that you will have some, uh, the the mouse if you click inside this virtual machine it will be stuck there it cannot come out because logically this is one operating system and the one which we are trying to install is another operating system so when you click inside this your mouse is captured by the operating system here and you see here a right control you see right control so to bring your mouse out of this virtual machine you have to press the right control key so that it will come out so let's do that now let's go back so I you see here I am my mouse is outside this virtual box machine now I am taking it inside and now clicking it you see now I am inside the virtual machine now what it is selected English press now enter and you see here continue without updating I'll enter then layout variant of the keyboard configuration just it is already identified so done now this is going to be your networking 
you see here DHCP is enabled so it will be assigning you some IP address let's not worry about the, this point done just done and to see it is blinking in the use entire disk it is selected with a cross that means it is selected so to go to done it is not selected done so we can you can enter the tab on your keyboard tab 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 you see done after it is at done selected press enter you see here this is the file system summary and it is already selected done so press enter and are you sure you want to and by default it's selected no so if what you have to do is go to continue so you can again either using the arrow key or the again tab key you can press enter tab then enter now give your name so i'll give here my name and you give a server name maybe test server and pick a name enayak this is the username for that and give a password for the your operating system you can choose anything you like and repeat it and press tab to now it is done and this is again press entered for the done and now if you want to install open SSH server and I recommend you select it and to select install open SSH you press the space bar on your keyboard so if you see here if I am pressing the space bar and again it is deselected again it is selected right so select it and again press the tab key and go to done and press enter and you don't need to select anything else just press tab and done enter that's it so it is installing now that's it installing the operating system if you do if you reached here that means you have successfully actually installed it will continue you don't need to do anything it will connect to the internet it will download all the packages required for the operating system and it will be installed so it will take some time i'll be back again after this is uh, installed and um, i once it shows that reboot it will be appearing that installation complete here installing system instead of installing system here it will appear as in the top left if you see installing system right it will appear that installation complete and on the bottom it will appear reboot then you have to press the tab to reboot and enter to reboot it and we'll do that once this is completed okay i'll uh, come back again on that thank you we are back <coughs> so you check here we left it uh, at installing and now you see install complete and it is still continuing to download the updates so what we can do is either we can use it we can wait for the updates to be completed or we can cancel the update either one we can actually uh, we can update it later so i'm going to cancel right now and for this recording or uh, you uh, practically you want to you should wait uh, let it be uh, completed so for this recording i am going to cancel the update and reboot so i'll i can press the tab so that you can select the cancel update and reboot so here i am i enter canceling the update <coughs> And it will now reboot the machine and it will give me the login screen okay so 
cancelling the update well this is it will take some time uh, it is due to a, my slow internet speed my remote desktop is far from my router so um, in fact it is in another room which as you can see i'm accessing using remote desktop uh, from a mac so for this recording so that i can i can record this video um, here is my remote desktop so i am accessing it and this is slow my internet for that desktop is slow maybe in my next video i'll bring the desktop near to the router you can in fact if you push the tab view full log you see what it is doing right setting up a snapd processing triggers and so on and so forth well it has already downloaded those software that is what it is configuring before rebooting so what has been already downloaded before we cancelled those software it is trying to install right so if you see here it is setting up distribution running ch root don't worry about all these things when you become expert maybe you will be able to understand all this log output but for the time being and don't worry about it <coughs> i yeah, obviously if you are uh, expert in linux you would not be seeing this video this is this video is for who are all pretty new to virtualization and pretty new to linux this software is this video is for them so uh, i I assume you don't know much about Linux or you don't know much about virtualization. That's why you are watching this video. So if you are watching this, uh, you are uh, not doing anything wrong. And uh, if you this, okay, it is now, you see this, it is just failed to unmount. So what you do is press enter to unmount it. You see automatically it restarted and the software is which we have installed that is the ubuntu server ubuntu 20 server is being installed already and it is rebooting and after this reboot it is look it is giving me and it will give me the console just press enter you see here it is asking login so we created if you remember a username called pnayak which you you should remember what username you gave so that you can log in and press enter and it's asking password and you should remember the password what you gave if you forgot that you will not be able to log in here right so now this is the linux operating system we created this is exactly the same ubuntu server if you are accessing on the cloud also so if you are using aws azure or google any cloud you will be actually creating a linux operating system mostly uh, yeah, if you are a windows guy obviously you create windows servers but if you're not uh, if you have some uh, mostly people access all the um, Linux server so you can now this is a machine where uh, command line I, I would um, encourage you to learn the command line interface for Linux not the graphical user interface for Linux so that's why purposefully I have not installed the graphical desktop if you see here in the um, when we download it <laughs> I didn't download the uh, Ubuntu desktop right so I didn't download the Ubuntu desktop I downloaded the Ubuntu 
server. This is the desktop. This is the graphical user interface. It will give you once you install, it will give you the don't install it, it will take it will take all the resources of your laptop. Because it itself is a desktop. It has got obviously you may have limited RAM. So if you're using the desktop, if you're creating a desktop on your desktop, then you are going to suffer your performance. Your your performance is going to be suffered. Performance of the machine because it has got limited hardware. So um, I suggest you use the server, which is the, it won't install the graphical user interface. It will give you the text user interface or command prompt or terminal. You can see PWD and you see slash home PNIAC. Well, um, now uh, this is just a brief introduction to virtualization and uh, how to install VirtualBox and how to create a VM on VirtualBox, how to create a Linux VM, uh, Ubuntu server on VirtualBox. If you will be able to do up to here, that means you have taken your first step towards cloud. Okay, so uh, in my look for my next video here, we'll be learning how to access this remotely. Uh, now you are directly accessing this VM, but if you want to access um, from your laptop, from Windows, from here, suppose now it is created. Now how can I access it from my um, laptop or maybe some other laptop uh, remotely? That I'll record in my next video. And till then, um, happy learning, and thank you very much for watching this video and if you like it please subscribe to my channel too and give me a thumbs up so that i'll be encouraged to create and record more videos on useful rather useful videos for you thank you and uh, enjoy your learning thank you